Alan, there's a lot of stories just in today's news about uh, different kinds of gun nuts all across the country. First of all, in Texas, uh, they went uh, to the legislature they went and basically seemed to be threatening some of the uh, people that they thought might vote against them. So uh, let's go to Talking Points memo, memo here that explains that the Houston Chronicle reported that about 15 to 20 members of the gun rights group Open Carry Tarrant County visited lawmakers' offices to persuade them to vote yes on Open Carry Bill HB 195. Several lawmakers told the newspaper that the activists hassled their staff and made them feel uncomfortable. Now, first of all, going to see your local state legislature is actually legislator is an awesome thing. There's nothing wrong with that. I fully encourage it, right? And sometimes they are made to feel uncomfortable uh, just because you're asking them to do something and they want to do business as usual. So I got no beef with that. The question is, how do you do that? So here's the description. Open carry Tarrant County's leader, Corey Watkins, posted video of one of the hostile visits to State Representative Pancho Navarro's office to YouTube and Facebook. In the video, Navarro tells the activists that he won't be voting in favor of HB 195, to which they respond, you won't be here very long, bro. You need to find a new job, bro. Okay, now we have the video for you guys. This is a part of it. I uh, gave you the general description to give you a sense of the whole video. Now take a look. If we need a yes vote from you, you don't want to vote yes, we're going to start shopping for somebody that will. I don't want to vote yes. All right, thanks for your time. Go Thank shop you. for them. We will. Hardcore. We you don't like the Constitution? Right. Yeah, I love the Constitution. Expect the pain. How about that Second Amendment that says oh, you have the right to bear arms and it shall not be infringed? I do read the Second Amendment. How about shall not be infringed? The security is coming to Texas. All right. Shall, shall, not, be, shall not be infringed. <laughs> nah, he's a mythical figure. <laughs> we're for real. Y'all can walk outside now. You guys have a good day. All right. Have a nice day. Thank you. Obi, don't worry about it. Obi. Don't touch me. Hey, walk out of my office now. It's, about it's his office. office. It's the you, people's you office. Leave, you can leave my office. They now. voted for you. You work for us. I'm gonna call the DPS guys. Talk to me on Let's go. Out of my office. Let's go. That's enough. It was fun for a while. Let's go. You are a tyrant. Yeah, I am. Let's go. Don't touch me. Well, I'll hey, walk hey, out on my own power. Hey, you need to leave now. Right. You need to leave. I'm asking you to leave my office. I'm asking you to leave my state because you don't take you your oath seriously. My you need to leave my office now. Read the Constitution. You need to leave my office. You need to leave my office. Leave my office. Hey, get your foot out of the door. What are you going to do? Yes. Don't, oh, he does not like the Constitution. Get out. Read the Constitution. Read the Constitution. Read the Constitution. Hey, guys. What are you going to do? Touch me or something? You're creeping up behind me? I'm just here, man. That'd be one wrong move, bro. I'm being nice. I'll show you mean. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Now, let's understand a couple things. He referred to him as a tyrant. Now, there's a very famous saying that uh, from Jefferson that says, the tree of liberty, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, has to be refreshed from time to time with the blood of tyrants. So that's not just a random reference there. So that's a very specific threat, right? And then you got to, uh, you know, all this talk of uh, you won't be here very long, bro. And you, you don't want to see me mean. And these guys are saying they're the ones with the guns. And they're coming in here threatening and trying to intimidate him. I mean, they went so overboard that C.J. Grisham from Open Carry, Texas, said, oh, now i got to go clean up their mess. Uh, and C.J. Grisham is the guy at Open Carry, Texas, who initially had all the people walking around with uh, all those weapons inside the Walmarts, et cetera. We showed you all those pictures, you know, carrying around these huge weapons inside these stores and inside the restaurants. Eventually, they, they knocked it out. But even those guys were embarrassed of these guys, right? Nah, that, you can't go in threatening people like that, man. That's mental. Now, think about it in a different context. Think about it if it was African Americans who go into a white legislator's office and they say, you won't be here very long, bro. If you vote against us, right? You haven't seen me be mean yet. And they make reference like that. How do you think that would have gone down? You think they would have been just allowed to walk out after a threat like that? These guys pushing people around. <laughs> Imagine if Muslim Americans <laughs> went into a legislator's office and said, you won't be here for very long, bro. What do you think happens to that Muslim? You think they get to just strut around the Capitol? Okay, now Texas is not the only place where they're doing crazy things. Uh, now uh, we go uh, to Michigan. I'm going to go to Harrisburg in a second. Uh, 
they had proposed the bill, thankfully Rick Snyder, actually the Republican governor, again another guy who says I'm a Republican but you guys are crazy, right, vetoed the bill, but here's what the bill would have done. The bill would have revised current Michigan law to state that if an individual with a temporary personal protective order issued against them for domestic violence is not explicitly prohibited by a judge from having a gun, that person can legally obtain a concealed pistol license. Current law states that anyone with a PPO issued against them for domestic violence or stalking is prohibited from carrying a gun concealed. The NRA is pushing a law that says even if you have a restraining order against you for domestic violence or stalking, you should be allowed to carry a concealed weapon. In case it's unclear who's pushing it, the article explains very clearly the National Rifle Association had tried to neutralize the opposition to the bill that was related to domestic violence and pressure Snyder to sign it. Now luckily he didn't sign it, but the NRA is going around the country, he's like, ah, oh, domestic violence, restraining order, no problem, give him a gun, give him a weapon, give him a weapon. Now, is it because they're responsible gun owners? No, they represent the gun manufacturers and they don't care that the bad guys have more guns. They buy them just the same, they make a profit off it just the same, in fact, it kind of helps if a lot of bad guys have weapons, then they go and turn around and Wayne LaPierre says for the NRA, hey, all you good guys who are scared to death of the bad guys with the guns, who we help to get the guns, now you also have to buy a gun to protect yourself because the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And once you all buy guns, we make more money. You think that's bad. Now let's go to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> they, this is already passed in the state house. And Senator uh, Dalen Leach, who is a Democrat of Pennsylvania, explains how mental it is. So this law uh, is called uh, Act 192, and it allows uh, for people, groups like the National Rifle Association, to challenge municipal gun ordinances in court. So he explains, we passed a law to allow outside groups to sue our own constituents. I don't know what state legislator does that. It's nothing but a gift to the NRA at the expense of our own people. So first of all, these guys claim that they're for tort reform. But they passed a law saying the NRA can sue us. Go ahead, have at it, Hoss, sue us. Why? Because there are uh, municipal ordinances like in Harrisburg, the one I'm going to be about to read to you. And the NRA hates these ordinances and they want them lifted. And if they can't do it by law, they want to be able to get legislatures to, or local councils to repeal them. Well, they're going to court and, uh, go to court and sue them and say, no, I got a right to hand out these guns in the places that you don't want me to hand them out. So listen to this. Harrisburg's ordinances, for example, forbid possession of guns by minors and discharging of guns in the city and in parks, mandate reporting of lost or stolen guns, and prohibit the sale or display of guns while the city is under a state of emergency. So the NRA is going to sue, and they have actually in Harrisburg, to make sure that you could have guns in in parks, that you could not only have them, but discharge them it, within the city and within parks. Yeah, if everybody fire away, who cares? Yeah. Oh, what a lovely park. Oh, look at the playground. Okay, great. So, minors, <laughs> have at it, boss. Give all the kids guns. That'll be great. We're in a state of emergency. Hand out guns for everybody, right? But the one that's actually the most damning is they want people to make sure they do not report their lost or stolen guns. Now, if you really didn't want bad guys to have guns, why would you care about that law? You would want it reported, oh my God, a bad guy's got my gun. Don't think that it was my gun. I'm a law-abiding, Second Amendment-believing citizen. That's my gun, but I, they, they stole it from me. No, they, because if you don't report lost or stolen guns, that's an easier way for bad guys to get guns. And the NRA wants the bad guys to have guns, because there's more guns sold. They don't give a damn about your Second Amendment rights. They don't care about gun owners, and they most certainly don't care about your community or protecting your community. All they care about is the almighty dollar, selling more guns, bad guys, good guys, they could care less. And they will try to pass the most extreme laws possible to make that happen. That's the reality of the insaneness of the gun lobby in America.